No! Well, that's not good. This is real, folks. Aloha, everyone. Today, I am changing the strings on my Cynthia Lynn signature ukulele here, and I thought I would invite you all along on the process. Changing strings can be a complicated thing. I know it's really intimidating if you've never done it before. So I'm gonna try to walk through all of the details in real time here. I'm gonna set up an overhead camera as well. I have a string winder here. You don't really need one, you can just use muscle power. Um, and then I have my replacement strings. On the signature uke, I have Worth Brown strings. So these are the strings I'm using. These are the BTs, which means brown and tenor. Even though I'm stringing uh, a concert, I'm, I like using the tenor strings and that's just a choice. And then I have a low G string here as well. So I have my Fremont low G and it's a wound string. So it's this bronze color. Okay, let's go to the overhead. So the way I like to do it is to take off one string at a time, starting with the G and then going down because if you start with the G, here, I'm gonna go close up, then you can do this cool thing where you tuck the strings neatly under the bridge here. I had already swapped out this string, so that's why that one's not tucked. So let's first remove this G string. I'm gonna use my winder to unwind the string. If you don't have a winder, you just manually unwind. No biggie. Okay. Okay. There, it's loosened there. And now I'm going to remove it from the bridge here, just like that. Okay, so pay attention to how it's wound here. So it goes through the hole here and then wraps up around, okay? Another reason to do one string first, in case you mess up, you can match what you're doing on all the other strings. I'm gonna start with my low G. So this ukulele is the Cynthia Lynn signature ukulele, the performance model. It is solid mahogany. It's a concert cutaway. And we include a low G. We include the Worth Brown strings and a low G uh, in the package because I prefer to play it with a low G. I think it sounds really nice with a low G. I'm sure you've heard it in many of my videos. go just uncoil and now we're gonna feed one end there you go through this hole okay and then if you get real close up here you're gonna come around this side and it's okay for you to leave like a good amount of tail um, because you want it to be long enough so that the next string can wrap it underneath, okay? So you're gonna come around the inside, okay? Feed it through the loop once, and then I like to feed it through another time. Let's see if I can do this elegantly. <laughs> okay, and then you pull it tight. And if it has this kink here, and doesn't seem like it's pulling very tight. Don't worry, that will flatten over time as um, as you tune it. As you, oops, stretch it out. I just played my piano here. Okay, let me turn off the piano. Let me do that. Now let's zoom back out here. Okay, so now I'm gonna stretch this up to this side and you want to make sure, here, let's zoom in again that you can get this string to sit in the nut here. That's that little groove right there. The reason that I like this wound G versus the fluorocarbon low G is that the fluorocarbon low G is super thick. So then you wind up needing to carve out that nut more. So I like the fact that this is a, a thinner string. Now, okay, I'm gonna back up a little bit here. There's a lot of extra string here. Sometimes I will try to save as much of this string as possible and then it'll fit 
maybe not on another concert, but actually it's definitely long enough to string another concert. So you might as well just use half and save half. And that's the same with the Worth Brown strings. They're intentionally, these strings, they're intentionally double the length so that you can use them for two ukuleles. I don't think that's intention for this low G string, but hey, it works. Okay, let's zoom all the way in. You're gonna feed through this hole. If, if the hole is not lined up, you can, you can turn the peg so that it lines up flat, right? Pull it all the way through. Feed it into the nut. Okay, now you wanna make sure that you wind it so that all the strings wind from the inside. Okay, you see how they're all winding from the inside? And so that's important. All right, so after you pull the string through, pull it back just, just a little bit, like an inch, so that you have a little room to wind. And then use your thumb to hold the string in the groove here while you start winding. And then you can also kind of like pull this string up a little bit just to give it a little bit of a kink and that helps it to stay in place as you're winding. And now you're gonna use your winder here or you know, good old muscle power. And make sure you're, you're turning counterclockwise in terms of looking at it from the top because you want it to wind on the inside. Yeah, and you want it to be as neat as possible. I'm keeping my thumb here in the groove and then the, as I wind, the string is gonna get straighter. Okay, so the string is straightening out. I have this crazy extra string hanging out, but that's okay, we can trim it later. I prefer to trim it later just in case, you never know. Oh, that's already pretty close. All right, and then you can even throw a tuner on there. And get it into, we're tuning into G. You can do a gentle pull on the string to help loosen it. You're gonna have to tune it several times before it's um, ready to play. Doing that little light string pull helps it get in tune faster. Okay, all right, first string done. Let's go to string number two. Now it should all go faster from here. String number two, right, is this one. We're following that string up. Unwind first. So now it's unwound enough that I can use this hand to release the rest of the coil. This is pretty tight in there. Okay. All right, finally released. Okay. And now, again, I am releasing from the bridge. Just like that. Okay. And then, okay, so you can see it's kind of trapped under here. It's been tucked under here. I can just pull that out. Right. Okay, so that is our C string. So in the worth packet, right, you have your first, second, third. We're not going to use the G because we already have that low G, so the third is the C. The numbering is technically, this is the first string, second string, third string, fourth string. So uh, that's how they're numbered. Yep. And again, these are super long, so just plan on using half. Okay, so again, feeding it through the hole in the bridge. Now, try to trap this tail as you are wrapping this one around. And again, you're gonna come to the inside, right? And then tuck under. Okay, and then tuck under again. Let me get close up on that. Okay, you tucked under, and now you're gonna tuck under again. Okay, 
it might not be super flush yet as you tighten the string it will flatten out Let's zoom back out we're gonna follow that string up through the hole pull all the way through okay and again pull back you know maybe just like an inch or so if you do a lot more than that it's just you wind up with a lot of string around the peg there and for me that gets a little cumbersome just pinch it up a little bit and now we wind okay counterclockwise All right Oh my gosh, there's all this extra string. I prefer to leave it on and cut it off later, just in case, you never know. Also, when the string is too short, there's a chance that it might like fly off and hit you in the face, which is something I'm really scared of when I'm changing strings. Okay, so you can see that this is kind of straightened out, but still really loose. So let's keep winding. And you can let go of the nut groove once it seems like it's gotten its place more. Let's get our tuner. Okay, we're in A sharp. B. Oh, C sharp, that's okay. So we're going to gently pull the string. Uh oh, you see I just pulled it out of the groove there. If you pull it out of the groove, then it's not going to play right. So make sure it falls back in the groove. All right. All right. Gently pulling the string. Now while we're here, let's go back and retune the G. All right? It's already fallen out of tune and it's going to do that. Okay. So just All right. All right. Let's move on to the E string. The E string, we're going to come up here and unwind this peg. Now I can just unwind it. Unwind that one. Okay. Removing it from the bridge. Again, tucked under this other string so you can just yank a little to loosen it. And if it doesn't come loose, you, it, you can just leave it here actually until the next one. It's not really coming loose for me, so why don't I just do that? Er, I don't wanna. Oh, got it. So now, onto our E string. Okay. So, again, right, through the hole, try to trap this tail from the C string. Okay, you're coming up the inside, wrapping and tucking through. One time, and then two times. Okay. This is a thinner string, so it pulls flat easily. Stretching it up. Okay. All the way through. Okay. Find the groove for it. Pull it back about an inch and then hold it in the groove. I give this string a little bend. I'm gonna straighten this out to wind it just cause it's too hard to do upside down here. Okay, tighten this one. As I'm winding, I can pluck it a little bit along the way. Okay, now let's go to our tuner. You can see why you need a winder. It definitely can take its toll on your wrists and your fingers. Just 
give this E string a little stretch and give all these strings a little stretch again, the new strings. Okay, so let's tune. Just a little stretch already brings it down a lot, half key, so. So we're gonna go back and tune everything again. Just get close because you're going to have to keep stretching and and keep tuning. Oh, see this one's already falling out a lot. Good enough. All right, let's move on to the A string. Okay, it is a little bit of a mess here. All right, maybe I will clip these. So this winder also happens to have a clipper, so. Um, I will go ahead and clip. I'm just going to give it a little twist and then clip. Okay, so these pointy ends, if they bother you, then you can clip them all the way down. Let's clip this one. I give them a little twist so that they kind of stay downwards. I'm going to take the leftover C string here that I just clipped off right and put it back in here and then you'll have it for next time the work brown strings are a little expensive but you do get two sets essentially in one set also they sound really nice i chose them for the signature ukulele because they pair really well with the mahogany wood and i like the mahogany wood it has a really warm balanced tone that goes well with my voice I chose the mahogany for my signature ukulele specifically because I'm a singer. If you're an instrumental player, you might want something brighter, but I like for this uh, tone to be warmer and um, maybe a little darker so that my voice can sit on top of it. Okay, let me clip this last one. Okay, roll it up, put it back in the E string bag. Okay, I'm gonna unwind the A string. Okay. All right, so you can just unwrap like that. It's easy. Okay. tie bridge around the tail of the E wrapping around once and again and then you can trim the end when you also trim the E string end. Okay isn't that nice? All right, we have everything nice and neat and tied up there. All right okay Again, pulling it all the way and then pulling it back like an inch, giving it a little bend. I'm gonna pick it up to wind it so that it's a little bit easier. Okay. Turning clockwise if you're looking down at it. And I keep my thumb in the groove here so that it stays on track. Uh-oh. All right, I wasn't paying attention and it wound up winding up instead of coiling down. So I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna even put my finger here to make sure it coils down. Okay, if you have three hands, it's a lot easier. <laughs> so maybe get a friend. You guys can both change your ukulele strings together. And actually, if you get a set of Worth Browns, then you can share them. That's kind of perfect. I'm using other strings to see if I'm in the ballpark. Oh, I also forgot. Oh, no. Well, that's not good. So my string popped out. 
of the tie bridge. So I'm gonna start over. This is real, folks. Should that have happened? No, but it's all right. All right, take two. <laughs> so something to watch out for. The string can slip out over here at this end. I'll give it more of a tail so that it won't slip out as easily. All right, lots of tail there. Actually with A, because it's thin, you could even do a third loop. And that's probably what I should have done to begin with. Okay. Awesome. All right, nice long tail, three loops. Let's zoom in so you can see that there are three, three loops on that one. Okay, back to the winding. Okay, and this time, we'll keep an eye on the tie bridge. Tie bridge is staying strong. Okay, we'll cut this. Okay, G's starting to hold, that's a good thing. I'm just tuning by hand. Music requires a little bit more precision to get into tune. I'm gonna gently keep tugging at these strings, right? Just lightly. Just make sure it doesn't fall out of the groove in the nut, okay? Right, and this should stay in the grooves. going to be the most out of tune right now because it's the most recent one. So keep stretching. All right. You're going to have to keep keep adjusting, keep tuning until the strings settle. It might take several tunings. but it's always nice to hear those fresh strings. Thank you everyone for joining me for this epic journey of changing strings in real time. Um, if you like this video, hey, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. I'm almost at 500,000 subscribers and if we're gonna do a giveaway at 500,000, why not? Check out my signature ukulele. This is the performance model. It is solid mahogany. And there's also a beginner model that is laminate mahogany, perfect for any beginner out there. And there are a couple of solid top signature ukuleles coming out really soon. Was this helpful for you? Let me know. Good luck changing your strings and keep me posted. Thanks everyone, aloha.